There were no financial benefits to this country through the oil. That's been and gone, wasted. We've now got a chance for the renewables and the wind farms, etc. Keep it local, keep the economy going, don't sell it off to private enterprise. I, it was a long way from shore, so you couldn't see the shoreline. It was really far north and really far out, away from everything. I've got videos I can show you. I've seen oil rig waves come right up, wiping out a cellar deck. And that's 60 metres. We look after each other. We're actually best of friends at times, sometimes not. <laughs> well, before 2014, companies told you that you were the best thing since sliced bread. After 2014, all you were was a number. Even with these companies making massive profits, they're still treating their guys not very well. Some of them are on zero work contracts. They don't know when their next job's coming. They've got wives and kids, mortgages. It seems like they've got a total disregard for the hard-working contracting employee. Yeah, these, these companies, uh, I don't think they really care. I think it's a thick box exercise that they're doing. Uh, they're just interested in maximising their profits for their shareholders. Uh, and the government is helping facilitate that. To make this work, basically, the, work, the workforce will make this work. The workforce can come up with great ideas to, to make things move forward. They just need to listen to them. I took engaging with Platform and Friends of the Earth Scotland to realise we all wanted the same thing, which was a just transition away from oil and gas that was worker-led. When I heard about it, I was interested in getting involved. It sounded like a positive discussion that was going to happen. At the meeting, it was all offshore workers and we came up with a a lot of solutions. It was very good to be held and it was good for all, all of us to be held. This is the way forward. Out of the demands of the workshop, I think nationalising uh, renewable energy is going to be the most important factor moving forward. So when I used to go on ships, we went into terminals in Norway and you could see that the uh, the money was distributed around that area. On the flip side of that, um, Oil and gas in, in the UK is uh, privatised and that is evident if you go f even through the streets of Aberdeen. As I say, Aberdeen, prosperous oil will say, the amount of people I know are using food banks, horrendous. The one I'm most interested in is number five, strong rank and file unions across the whole offshore industry. Now I'm a big believer in this because we need protection and the way you get protection is through the union. Uh, number three, a training regime built to keep workers safe instead of for profits. We have all these different organisations making money out of workers. It's time their heads were knocked together so we can have a just transition. Workers aren't just a number, they're a person that has experience, that has values, that has opinions and they should be worth something. Well, I think uh, the workers in the climate movement should work together so we could spread these uh, 10 demands that we've come up with as far as possible so they know what the offshore workers and the renewable workers want in the future. Uh, it's not just a Scottish thing, a UK thing, it's a worldwide thing. But if you start locally, it'll grow. I used to think that nothing would change and we would continue using fossil fuels up and I saw the future as being quite bleak and uh, and now I'm more hopeful about uh, what might happen in the future and hopefully what will happen in the future. If, if, if the demands are uh, met and there's no reason why they shouldn't be it would mean prosperity for you, your family, your city, your country and globally hopefully saving the planet. Thank you.